So far, the first two days in this chapter, we've been using a Ferris wheel as a representation to introduce periodic functions. Today's notes, we're going to take a slight detour from that and start to talk about marking angles in a circle. And the reason is because it's much more convenient as we move forward when we think about uh, position on a circle to think of as think of an angle rather than a time position. So rather than 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, like we have been referencing in terms of where we are on the circle, today we're going to learn how to mark out position on a circle as an angle. So uh, a couple things about thinking of a circle. If we think of zero degrees as right here where the x-axis meets the circle, then this up at the y, where the y-axis meets the circle, that would be 90 degrees. If I went halfway around the circle, thinking rotating counterclockwise, so if I'm rotating this way, I would be at 90 degrees, then 180 degrees would be halfway around the circle, 270 degrees would be three quarters of the way around the circle, and 360 would put me back where I started in terms of one full revolution around the circle. So one revolution of a circle, if you remember from geometry, is 360 degrees. Two revolutions would be 720 degrees. And three revolutions would be 360 plus 720, which is 1,080 degrees. Um, obviously, we could do parts of rotations around the circle or revolutions around the circle. So half a revolution counterclockwise would be 180 degrees. Obviously, a fourth of a revolution around the circle would be 90 degrees, so on. And you can kind of break up the circle into a bunch of different angle increments. And we're, in terms of what we're doing today, we're going to be talking about rotating around a circle. Counterclockwise would be uh, the positive direction, and we'll talk about what it means to rotate the other way here in a little bit. So... For the first example, we're going to just practice sketching some angles. So if you look at example A, or example 1, part A, uh, if I want to sketch this angle, I want to think of where 60 degrees would lie on uh, the circle, if there were a circle there. Uh, if I put my vertex at 0, 0, 60 degrees would be somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. So 60 degrees would look something like that. Um, it's not going to be a perfect science here at the beginning, but you should know that 60 degrees in terms of the angle here would be between 0 and 90. Now, a little bit of vocabulary is every angle that we're going to be drawing here is going to have what we call an initial side, which is always going to be on the x-axis in the positive direction. And the terminal side is going to be essentially where I draw that other side of my angle so that the uh, measure between them is the angle that I'm trying to draw. So in this case, the terminal side would be slightly less than 90 degrees to mark out an angle of 60. And this position that we're drawing it in with the vertex at 0, 0, initial side on the x-axis, and the terminal side rotating counterclockwise, that's what we call standard position. So all the angles we're going to draw are going to be in standard position. So if you look at uh, part B, I'm going to draw my initial side. 120 degrees should put me somewhere between 90 and 180 degrees. So if you look there, there's 120 degrees between my initial and terminal side. And then in a little bit, we're going to kind of reference how far away my terminal side is from the x-axis. In this case, it's 60 degrees because this is 180. And if I'm at 120, then the difference between that should be 60 degrees. And there's a name for that, and we'll talk about that here in a second. So that's what a 120-degree angle should look like. So if you look at example C, one thing you should notice right away is, so I draw my initial side, um, and I'm trying to draw an angle that's 450 degrees. And 450 degrees is larger than 360 degrees, which means I should rotate around the circle one full time and then go some more past that. So if you look at how I would draw this, the reason I knew my terminal side should go there is because 90 degrees more than 360 is 450. But what you might be thinking is right now that looks like how do I distinguish between 
a 90 degree angle, which would just be right in between there, or something larger. So what we should do is, or the way we would draw that is, you would show an arrow that goes once around the circle, which is 360, and then another 90 degrees, lets me know that this terminal side is not a 90 degree angle, it's once around the circle plus another 90 degrees. So if you think about how you should draw this, the way, a quick way to reference how far past a full revolution you go is if you subtract 360 from 450, gives you 90, that tells you you should go once around plus another 90 degree revolution. So what I should do is think of this angle as one revolution plus 90 degrees past that revolution. And that's how you would draw it with that arrow there. Now what you should notice about part D is there's a negative in front of my angle. So if rotating counterclockwise is positive angles, then rotating clockwise would be how we draw negative angles. So if I want to draw negative 200 degrees, I'm still going to draw this in standard position. So I'm going to put my vertex at 0, 0, and I'm going to put my initial side on the x-axis like I would before. And I'm going to draw an angle going in the clockwise direction. So if you look, there's my initial side there. If I want to go negative 200 degrees, here's the way I think about that. This would be negative 180. And then I would need to go 20 more degrees in the negative direction to get to an angle of negative 200 degrees. And then I drew in purple here kind of the little measure between the terminal side and the x-axis which is 20 degrees and we're going to identify a name for that here in the on the next page or on my next slide which is visible kind of on your page so that's kind of how you just draw a couple different angles uh, an acute angle of 60 degrees an angle between 90 and 180 120 an angle that is more than one rotation and then an angle in the negative direction which would be rotating clockwise now, um, what the name for what, we, what I was saying before, which is the angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis, that's called the reference angle. And the reference angle in any angle that we draw is always positive and always acute. So it's always positive and always between 0 and 90 degrees. So in these examples, we're very similar to the last ones, we're going to draw the angle. And then we're going to identify the reference angle just by looking at where the terminal side or the, the measure between the terminal side and the x-axis. So for A, that's what uh, my two sides should look like. So my initial side should be on the x-axis. I'm going to rotate clockwise to 210. I know it should be there because it's past 180 degrees by a little bit, which that little bit in this case is actually 30 degrees. So the reference angle is going to be just that distance or that measure between the terminal side and the x-axis. So again, my reference angle is positive, which is 30 degrees. I showed positive by drawing my arrow in that direction, the counterclockwise direction. And it's 30 degrees because 180 to 210 is a 30 degree angle. For part B, draw my vertex and my initial side. My terminal side should be in quadrant 4. And I'm going to begin to reference quadrants a lot more as we get a little more comfortable. I know it's in quadrant 4 because all the way around the circle is 360. And 330 should be almost all the way to 360, but not quite. Uh, and it's actually, the terminal side should actually be 30 degrees away from my initial side. So it's almost one full revolution, but not quite. So my reference angle in this case is also... 30 degrees. There's many, many, many different angles that have the same reference angle. Uh, I can go around the circle, you know, half a time, one and a half times, two and a half times, and uh, you can have a reference angle that is repeated for many, many different angles, which you'll see here in a little bit. But the reference angle in this case is positive. I show that with the arrow direction that I draw. And um, A and B have the same reference angle, although the original angle wasn't the same. For part C, I want to draw a 135 degree angle, which is exactly actually in the middle of 90 and 180 degrees. 
So there's my initial side and there's my terminal side. So there's my 135 degree angle. And then in terms of my reference angle, it would be how far away the terminal side is from the x-axis, which in this case is a reference angle of 45 degrees, shown in purple there on the graph. Or on the, yeah, on the graph. And then for part D, I want to draw a 70 degree angle and find its reference angle. So here's the, here's the tricky part about this one is, I drew my 70 degree angle, you can see my vertex at 0, 0. Uh, my initial and terminal side are all, both in quadrant 1. So the reference angle should be acute, which means less than 90, and positive, which means my reference angle in this case is actually the same as my original angle. And what the idea there is, uh, for any angle that's drawn in quadrant 1, anything between 0 and 90, the reference angle and the angle are exactly the same. And you can see that if I drew anything between there, if I drew a 20 degree angle, the reference angle would be 20 degrees. If I drew a 30 degree angle, the reference angle would be 30 degrees. Um, so anything in quadrant one will have the same, the reference angle and the original angle will be exactly the same. One major reason why reference angles are important is um, when we start to figure out position on a circle in terms of coordinates, uh, the reference angle is gonna come in handy along with a little bit of the geometry stuff. Hopefully you remember from uh, right triangle. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. The first thing we have to identify is what the unit circle is. So if you ever hear the words unit circle, it's referring specifically to a circle with a radius of one. Uh, any other circle that we'll deal with in these contexts will have a radius that's different than one. So I'm gonna draw here a circle, uh, draw my x, y axis going through that circle. I'm still gonna mark out my angles like I have been, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. The difference, though, is if this is the unit circle, then the coordinates where my circle meet my axes are actually 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So if I'm on my unit circle, then this is the radius from the center to the edge. It has a radius of 1. This has a radius of 1. This has a radius of 1, and this has a radius of 1. One thing you're going to see, though, is the reason this is negative 1 is because I'm going 1 in the negative direction, and the reason this is negative 1 down here is also because I'm going in the negative direction, which will have a lot to do with these next examples coming up. So what we want to do here is find the coordinates of the point on the unit circle. So again, unit circle is specifically a circle with a radius of 1 given a specific angle. So the f for part A, you really have to draw it, or for most of these, you really have to draw it, but for part A, I'm gonna kind of demo the process so we're all on the same page in terms of what we're gonna do. So the first thing I would do is draw my circle. That's about 22 degrees, if I think of kind of an angle in standard position. And what we wanna do with that angle now is instead of just measuring the angle, we wanna try and generate a, a right triangle between the point on the circle where the 22 degree angle is marked out. So if this is 22 degrees, the terminal side intersects the circle at some point. And we're just gonna label that point some x, y. And we're gonna find the coordinates using a little bit of geometry that uh, hopefully this refreshes your memory. So if this is a 22 degree angle, what we should know is the, the radius, or in this case, the hypotenuse of that triangle is 1, and the x-coordinate of the point is really some distance, horizontal distance in the positive direction, and the vertical distance is some positive distance in the y direction. So I have a right triangle that looks something like that. Now in order to be able to solve this problem, which in this case would be find the coordinates of this point, what we're going to have to remember is SOHCAHTOA. So if you remember from ge your geometry days, what SOHCAHTOA means is it's really just a relationship between the sides of a triangle. So the sine of an angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse of the triangle. Cosine of an angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent of some angle is the opposite side over the adjacent side. 
And that's really going to come in handy in terms of how we figure this out. So if you look at this triangle here, we have a 22 degree angle. And the cosine of that angle, cosine of 22 degrees, would be the adjacent side, which in this case is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So cosine of 22 is x over 1, which means x, x over 1 is x, x is actually equal to the cosine of 22 degrees. So that's something for now you'd have to do in your calculator. And make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Uh, the way you do that is you hit mode and make sure it says degrees is highlighted rather than radians. So if I typed cosine of 22 into my calculator, what I would get is 0 0.927. And what that is is this number is the, actually the x-coordinate of the point on the circle. And that's just because if I'm thinking of this as a triangle, the x distance is going to be the same as cosine of 22 degrees. So I found my x-coordinate, now I'm going to find my y-coordinate. So y, in this case, how do I find this vertical distance using the same angle? Well, it's actually going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is the sine of 22 degrees. So if I find sine of 22 degrees, that's equal to the opposite side of that angle, which is y over 1. y over 1 is y. So similarly, if I just put sine of 22 degrees in my calculator, it will give me a number, a value. In this case, the value would be 0 0.375. So y is the y-coordinate of that point. x is the x-coordinate of that point, which means the coordinates of that point are 0 0.927, comma, 0 0.375. And I rounded those to three decimal places. I'm always going to round to three decimal places unless told otherwise. That's kind of the process. have to think about where 22 degrees would be where the terminal side intersects the circle is going to be some point, and we're going to use our geometry relationships of triangles to find those coordinates. Now, for example, B, I'm going to do basically a similar process. I'm going to draw a 130-degree angle. Feel free to pause this at any time. Just kind of make sure you have down what I have down. Um, but I'm going to draw a 130-degree angle, which will put me in quadrant 2. And then I have a triangle formed by the point where uh, my terminal side would in intersect my circle. So the coordinates of that point are some x, y, x, comma, y. Um, the one thing you will have to be aware of is the point is um, in a certain quadrant. And the, depending on where I am on the circle, my coordinates could be positive or negative depending on my location, which you'll see here in a second. So... Uh, my reference angle for this 130 degree angle is 50 degrees. So if I want to find the x coordinate, which is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, what I'm going to do is set up a trig relationship. So cosine of 50 degrees is going to be x over 1, which means uh, x is going to be cosine of 50 degrees, which in put that in my calculator is going to be 0 0.643. So there's my x coordinate. Then to find my y coordinate, I would find the sine of 50 degrees because that would be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And again, the hypotenuse is 1 because I'm on my unit circle. Unit circle will always specifically mean radius of 1. So I have my y coordinate is 0 0.766. So to write the coordinates of my point, the one thing I do have to be aware of is the fact that my x coordinate is actually going to be negative. Um, the reason why it's going to be negative is because I'm in quadrant 2, so any point in quadrant 2, I would go to the left first, which is negative x direction, and then up, which would be a positive y direction. So the coordinates of this point should be negative 0 0.643, positive 0 0.766. For example C, I'm going to do a similar process. So I'm going to draw my 370 degree angle, which would be once around the circle, plus another 10 degrees. So there's my picture there. I'm going to also draw my triangle, my resulting triangle. So my reference angle here is 10 degrees. So I have a resulting triangle that looks something like that. So I have some point on my circle where my terminal side, this side right here, intersects my circle. 
And to find those coordinates, I'm just going to use the sine and cosine of my angle, my reference angle, which is 10 degrees. And I'll be able to locate the x and y coordinate of that point. So uh, the x coordinate is going to be cosine of 10 degrees. It's going to be x over 1, which is x. So my x coordinate is going to be 0 0.985. And then my y coordinate is going to be the sine of 10 degrees. Sine of 10 is y over 1. So sine of 10 in my calculator is 0 0.174. Because I'm in quadrant 1, both my x and y coordinate are positive. So the coordinates of the point on the circle are going to be 0 0.985 comma 0 0.174. Don't have any negative coordinates here because I'm, again, in quadrant 1 where my reference, my angle of 370 degrees takes me all the way around the circle and then 10 degrees into quadrant 1. And that's how I'd find those coordinates. And then for part D, I'll do the same thing. The only difference is I have to rotate clockwise. So if I draw my picture, I'm going to be uh, backwards 150 degrees. So here's what my picture should look something like. The one thing I do want to make sure I have is my reference angle, because my reference angle is the one I'm going to need in order to find my coordinates. So negative 150 degrees would have a reference angle of 30 degrees, shown there in purple. And then my triangle would be the result of, you know, some distance of x, some distance of y, and my hypotenuse is 1. So if I want to find the coordinates of my points, I would set up a cosine of 30 degrees is going to be x over 1. And uh, my, which if I put that in my calculator, I get 0 0.866. And then the sine of 30 degrees is going to be actually exactly 0 0.5. Don't have to round there. So I have my coordinates. The only thing I have to be aware of, though, however, is one thing I wrote up at the top there while that example was going is you have to be careful of your signs. And I've kind of mentioned it along the way, but because I'm in quadrant 3, my x value should be negative and my y value should also be negative. I don't want to think that my distances are negative, but my location will determine my sign of my point. So my coordinates should actually be negative 0 0.866 comma negative 0 0.5. Because that put that angle puts me in quadrant three, which has a negative x value, negative y value. So I just drew kind of a quick little reference. Quadrant three would be both negative coordinates. Um, quadrant 4 would be a positive x coordinate, negative y coordinate. Just having an idea of location obviously uh, determines those signs. So uh, example 4, the difference in example 4 is we want to find the coordinates of a point with an angle of 160 degrees, but the radius of my circle is not 1. We're not on the unit circle. We're actually on a circle with a radius of 4.3 rather. So in my picture, I drew my 160 degree angle, uh, which would have a reference angle of 20 degrees. I drew my, tri my resulting triangle as well from the coordinates there. One thing you want to be sure of is from this point, I go straight down, which forms a right angle, and then I have my reference triangle. So if my hypotenuse is 4.3, it's going to change. We're not going to change how we set up our x and y value, but it will change how we calculate our x, y value. So in this case, the cosine of 20 degrees is actually going to be x over 4.3. Instead of x over 1, like the previous example, it's going to be x over 4.3. Uh, so to solve for x, I would actually multiply both sides by 4.3. So what I'd get is 4.041 is my x value. And obviously, that was a calculator uh, value. As we get further into this chapter, we'll be able to find some of these cosine sine values without a calculator, but that's, that's a little bit more down the road. Um, so there's my x value, and then the y value would be similar setup, but with sine. Uh, so sine of 20 degrees is going to be y over 4.3, the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So then, let's multiply both sides by 4.3, and what that would give me is a y value of 1.471. And then the last thing you need to do in order to write your coordinates is consider your location in terms of your signs of your point. So if I think about in quadrant 2, I should have a negative x value and a positive y value. So my coordinates will actually be negative 4.041 
comma 1.471 and so the only thing that changed there was my radius was different so I had to consider that in my setup for x and y and then last example I kind of alluded to it before is finding four different angles with the same reference angle so for a I have a reference angle of 80 degrees so what I want to do is draw four different angles that have the same reference angle so the first one I would draw is 80 degrees so 80 degrees because it's in quadrant one has a reference angle of 80 degrees and then if I want to get into quadrant two I would draw a hundred degree angle so a hundred degree angle has a reference angle of 80 degrees shown there in purple and then if I want to get into quadrant three I would rotate around to 260 degrees because that would be 80 degrees past 180 so so far I have in blue there 80 degrees which has a reference angle of 80 in red I have 100 degrees which has a reference angle of 80 in orange I have a 260 degree angle which also has a reference angle of 80 degrees and then to get all the way into quadrant four there's two ways you can do it you can go backwards from uh, your initial side or you can go all the way around the circle um, and get to that same terminal side in this case I just drew it backwards just because my drawing was starting to get a little complicated but if I drew have an angle of negative 80 degrees so if I go backwards 80 degrees that still has a reference angle in the positive direction of 80 degrees so all four of these angles have a reference angle of 80 degrees and then for part B I want to draw uh, four angles that have a reference angle of 20 so the first one I'll draw is a 20 degree angle has a reference angle of 20 degrees the next one I would draw to get me into quadrant 2 would be 160 degrees because 160 degrees has a reference angle of 20 degrees just the distance between the x-axis and the terminal side and then to get into quadrant 3 I would go 200 degrees you can see in blue there I went past 90, past 180 to 200, which is 20 degrees away from the x-axis. And then to get into quadrant 4, in this case, I actually went all the way around the circle, minus 20 degrees. So 340 degrees would have a reference angle of 20 degrees, if I drew it right in here, also 20 degrees. And there's a lot more answers. I could also get to those same places in the negative direction. I could also go two times around the circle and stop at those places. Um, there are really infinitely many answers, but the idea is being able to locate a 20 degree reference angle. Um, you're asked to get into four different quadrants. So um, that's how I do those. Uh, and that's it for today's notes. We'll, uh, your homework tonight is day three. Just as a reminder, uh, do on Google Classroom tomorrow by 11 a.m. Please bring questions to class tomorrow. Um, hope this video is helpful, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks.